Good afternoon to everyone and welcome you to this time of prayer and reflection on this lovely Sunday afternoon, the Sunday in which we celebrate the solemnity of the Most Blessed Trinity. So I'll begin as usual by um, reciting the, the Angelus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Word was made flesh, and dwelt amongst us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> so before I said the Angelus, I mentioned it was today is the, the solemnity of the Most Blessed Trinity, the Sunday after Pentecost. We honour God as one God, three persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which we do all the time, but we dedicate this particular Sunday to honour God in the way we believe in him as Jesus taught us. I was reading this morning a, a lovely letter from St. Athanasius, one of the great defenders of the, 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 the Trinity in the early church, and this is a little bit of what he said in his letter. It will not be out of place to consider the ancient tradition, teaching, and faith of the Catholic Church, which was revealed by the Lord, proclaimed by the apostles, and guarded by the fathers. For upon this faith the Church is built, and if anyone were to lapse from it, he or she would no longer be a Christian, either in fact or in name. So St. Athanasius is very definite about the, the place of the Trinity and the importance it has in our, our belief system and the teachings, faith of the Catholic Church. He made it clear, it was revealed by the Lord himself, which that's where it comes from, the Lord's own personal understanding and presentation to us of the Father, self as the Son of God and the Holy Spirit, which he promised he would send upon us, and which had actually come upon him already through his baptism and had come upon Mary the time of the conception of, of Jesus. And then the Holy Spirit came down as promised on the church on the day of Pentecost. And the Holy Spirit remains with us, and we celebrate the presence of the Spirit in the church's sacraments. So... St. Saint, Saint Athanasius was one of the, the great fathers of the church in the early times. But there's been fathers and mothers of the church through the ages who have honoured the, the Trinity, both by what they said, their, their, their explanations of their faith, their exhortations to continue to believe and to trust in the faith, and by the example of they gave of living that faith the practice of the faith and their, their worship and Christian living. So we're richly blessed in our Christian faith in God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Just a wee bit more from St. Athanasius. He went on to say, We acknowledge the Trinity, holy and perfect, 
to consist of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In this Trinity, there is no intrusion of any alien element or of anything from outside, nor is the Trinity a blend of creative and created being. It is a wholly creative and energizing reality, self-consistent and undivided in its active power. For the Father makes all things through the Word and in the Holy Spirit, and in this way the unity of the Holy, Spirit, the Holy Trinity is preserved. Accordingly, in the Church, one God is preached, one God who is above all things, and through all things, and in all things. God is above all, is above all things as Father, for He is principle and source. He is through all things, through the Word, and He is in all things, in the Holy Spirit. So He was a great thinker about the, the mystery of the Trinity and used the, the words which he, he, he had in his, his learning to, to express that the unity of the three persons in the one God and how that our faith is so much centered upon that. It, 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 Saint, Saint um, Paul um, was somebody too who, who proclaimed the faith in, in the Trinity and in the, the one of the passages we listened to at Mass today, at the end of his letter, his second letter to the Corinthians, he, he summed it up in the, the greeting he sent to all the saints. He said, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And that's the, the, the greeting we, we use frequently at the beginning of Mass and other services. We talk, we mention this. He did the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and then he, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Today we use the word communion in the, 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 in the greeting at Mass, the communion of the Holy Spirit, and he prays that it will be with us all. So there's that great sense of the, the Holy Trinity surrounding and blessing all our, our, our worship in church, our personal prayers when we say the, the sign of the cross, and then all our work, all our work is an expression of the, the grace which we've received from God. The grace is a beautiful word in itself, um, and it expresses this, this idea, this knowledge we have that the life of God has been gifted to us. And the the love of God is, is expressed in Jesus Christ coming amongst us and coming to, to save us. And the fellowship or the communion of the Holy Spirit is with us permanently because the Lord has showered his Spirit upon the church. So it's a great day then to celebrate our Christian faith and this particular Sunday to honour and give glory to God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit and to acknowledge his wonderful life within us, the grace which he continues to pour out upon us, and thus invites us to, to live in fellowship and communion with one another, as he would wish us to, to show that the, the love of God is alive amongst us. It's not just something which is out there, an additional, an additional sort of extra in our lives, but rather it's the reality of who we are, who we are as personal beings created in the image and likeness of God and who we are as the, the community, the communion, the faithful in our Lord Jesus Christ. It, what, one of the things I, I thought of about today and thinking about the, the liturgy, the word and the, the readings we're presented with, I don't know, a thought came into my mind, it's, it's, very, it's very current, it's, it's about artificial intelligence and I, I don't know if any of you have thought about this, but there's been quite a lot of concern offered recently about the extent of artificial intelligence and how much it's growing, how much it's going to take over or has already taken over aspects of, 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 of living in the world, sometimes for, for in a very, very good way, hopefully always in a very, very good way. But as it grows, we see its potential to become more and more powerful. And 
take over more and more things. And then people are asking the question, well, will it become too powerful? Will it take over us and direct our lives and rule our lives? So big questions there as, as the world develops in, in the way it can do nowadays from the, from, from the, the, the machines and that, that we are able to build and the, the things we, they, 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 they can do. And then I was thinking about then, well, what about religion, you know? Where does it fit in? And I was looking up one or two things to see what had been said about it. And the church, different Christians are thinking about this and wondering, well, will it, will it take over religion too? Is that possibility is there? And I think there is a, a, a possibility that, that artificial con- intelligence could be set up in such a way to, to direct religions and perhaps even do the religion for us to do the praise and worship of God, as it can, can do at present when we use machines and that to, for our singing. But maybe to, to go into that further. So, so there's, there's, great, there's great potential and great development there, but there's also a sense we need to be cautious and we need to kind of, I think we need to keep, keep ourselves, the human beings, at the centre of our lives in the world, in the sense that we've been given this world, we've been created in God's image and likeness, we've been blessed by the gifts of intelligence and all the other abilities we have as the creatures of God, we've been redeemed by the Lord too, by the Lord Jesus Christ, and at the same time then we we need to to honour God in our lives. Perhaps I just kind of see us. We've got we've got God one side ourselves in the middle, and then we've got this ability maybe to to further um, develop and create new new things in a way. And we, we we have to kind of maybe keep the balance right. I was I was there was a really interesting passage we listened to today in the in the first reading about about Moses, and it was it was after he had he had received the 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 Ten Commandments, the two tablets of stone, and then he brought them down to the, the people to present the, the, the law from God. And he'd, when he came off the mountain, there they were, they were honouring the, the golden calf. And there was a great crisis that they had abandoned God. And then Moses was, was coming with the, the law of God for them. So there was a whole, whole thing there about what, what would happen in his anger. He, he smashed the tablets of stone and he, he gradually asked the people to, to repent and prayed really, really hard to God that God would forgive them and they would, that they would re- repent and turn again to God. And eventually, this is the passage we listened to today, it tells us he went back up the mountain and he took two bits of the, the stones which had been smashed in his hands. And when he, when he went up the mountain, the, the Lord was, was with him descended in the form of a cloud and, and Moses stood there. And then the Lord's words to him were, Lord, Lord, a God of tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in kindness and faithfulness. And Moses bowed to the ground at once and worshipped. And then said, if I have indeed won your favour, Lord, he said, let my Lord come with us, I beg. True, they are a headstrong people but forgive us our faults and our sins and adopt us as your heritage. So it was a a wonderful prayer of humility, of worship to God on behalf of his people. But he was able to do it because God had revealed himself to him as a God of tenderness, compassion, slow to anger, rich in kindness, faithfulness. So it's it's that sense, the image we have there of God, even in the Old Testament times, showering his blessings upon the people who had this tendency to, to move away from him, and yet he, God was there ready for them when they came back in the person of Moses to bow before him and worship him. And we heard in the Gospel then too when St. John speaking the, the, the lovely words um, of the, about Jesus saying to Nicodemus, God loved the world so much he gave his only son, so that whoever who believes in him may not be lost but may have eternal life. So there's that great promise then when Jesus came amongst us showering, showing us the love of God and 
giving us the promise of eternal life. So I think, you know, in the, the world we live in today, that presence, that acknowledgement of God is, is very necessary and it's a very powerful part of our lives. And it, I think it's a, a protection for us in our, in, our own, in our own abilities and in our own capabilities. Because sometimes maybe there is a tendency to, to go at ourselves and to say, well, we can advance without God. Yet God is there as the, the one who has given us this life, who has poured his grace upon us, and who loves us to come and worship him and to, to try to follow his way and to realize the best way to progress in life. So I think it's we're in an interesting time in our world, with all these difficulties, yet there's all this massive progress being made and the questions that arise. And there is the need to, I think, for us to hold on to our faith and to put it at the center of our lives and to honor God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So I think we'll finish off then. The other, the other passage from the, the Mass today, which I didn't mention the, from the, the readings, it was the, the, the responsorial psalm. And I think it's a, it's a lovely, it's not a, kind of the usual psalm. It's, it's taken from the, the book of Daniel. And I think it's, all, it's very lovely when we, we, do say, we do say it at Mass or in the, the Divine Office. So I'll just read that and then I'll give you the blessing. So it's from the, the Daniel's praise of God. To you, glory and praise forevermore. You are blessed, Lord God of our fathers. To you, glory and praise forevermore. Blessed your glorious holy name. To you, glory and praise forevermore. You are blessed in the temple of your glory. To you, glory and praise forevermore. You are blessed in the throne of your kingdom. To you, glory and praise forevermore. You are blessed to gaze into the depths. To you, glory and praise forevermore. You are blessed in the firmament of heaven. To you, glory and praise forevermore. And may Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. His peace come down upon you, be you forever. Amen. So, good evening now and enjoy the rest of this pleasant day.